So my wife is here. Ellen, I love you too. Uh, Francis, I would like to discuss the Colombo comment with you later. And that's all I have to say because the delusions of what everybody else said, I don't want to uh, mess with that. That was really sweet. Um, thank you for the very kind and generous words and the tribute, which means so much to me, coming from friends who I love that are making the world a better place. Thank you. I know I am being honored here tonight, but we are all really here to honor Friends of Cancer Research, Ellen Siegel and Marlene Malik, for their extraordinary efforts over the past 25 years. Ellen, you are a force of nature, and I am deeply honored and humbled to receive an award in your name. I asked my wife if she ever in her wildest dreams imagined I would receive such an honor. And she said, no, my love, you are never in any of my wildest dreams. <laughs> I would like to thank the team and board at Friends of Cancer Research, our incredible team board and advisory committee at ACT for NIH, my wife, Yael, my children, Jonathan, Joshua, and Michaela, my brother Greg, my parents and heroes, Jennifer and Freyden, the incredibly generous Andy Sabin, and the, Amber and the Anderson Cancer Center, and President Peter Pisters for his support and for joining us tonight. And of course, acting NIH and NCI directors, Larry Tabak and Doug Lowy, and their predecessors, Francis Collins and Ned Sharpless. Supposed to be joining us tonight, but I think they're voting on funding for Ukraine, are uh, members of Congress that are also dear friends. Diana DeGette, who along with Fred Upton fought for years to make the 21st Century Cures Act a reality. Michael McCall, who was responsible for the passage of five childhood cancer bills. Senator Chris Coons, who along with Senator Jerry Moran, recently published an op-ed seeking a $1 billion increase to the NCI budget. And Speaker Pelosi, who I think will be joining us shortly, who has been a champion of biomedical research her entire career. <clears throat> Congress has elevated NIH funding as a bipartisan congressional priority. Most of all, I'd like to express our gratitude to the chairs and ranking members of the Labor, Health, and Human Services Subcommittee that determine NIH funding levels. Senator Roy Blunt, Senator Patty Murray, Chair Rosa DeLauro, and Congressman Tom Cole for their extraordinary commitment to NIH and NCI funding. In 2011, I met Dr. Ron DePino we discussed the biomedical research crisis. He invited me to join the board of visitors of MD Anderson, and he has been an invaluable friend and partner ever since. With no background in politics or science, but an abundance of ignorance and audacity, I decided to double the NCI budget. I quickly realized that the path to doubling NCI was through NIH, so I broadened our mission. The singular mission of ACT for NIH is restoring and then doubling the NIH budget. Even with the historic $15 billion, 48% increase to the NIH budget over the past seven years, funding levels are not even close to adequate to capitalize on all of today's great opportunities. NIH-funded research drives our economy, reigns in unsustainable health care costs, and spares millions across the globe from the ravages of disease. The cost is billions, the return is trillions, and it is priceless to patients and their families. It is only through the tremendous promise of science that we will find solutions to the most intractable diseases and conditions and rein in skyrocketing healthcare costs that are on an accelerating path to bankrupt the federal government. 
According to the American Cancer Society, one out of every five Americans alive today, 66 million people will die of cancer. I'm gonna repeat that. One out of every five Americans alive today, 66 million people will die of cancer. We should fight cancer with no less urgency than we devoted to COVID-19, the Manhattan Project, or the Apollo mission. We need robust, sustained investment in cancer research through the National Cancer Institute, as well as through ARPA-H. In 2003, 33% of NCI grant applications were approved. Today, there is only enough funding to approve less than 14% of grant applications. We are at risk of losing an entire generation of brilliant young cancer researchers. We have the expertise to translate research findings into effective treatments and even cures for many forms of cancer but only if we have the will to make the investment. We should unapologetically advocate, and Congress should pledge, $1 billion increases to the NCI budget every year until we are no longer delaying and discarding the vast majority of highly merited research proposals. At the greatest time in history for scientific advancement, there is no single action that will do more to advance our nation and ease human suffering than doubling the NIH and NCI budgets. Millions of lives are at stake, and we have a moral and fiscal responsibility to act decisively and urgently. There are too many patients to be patient. Thank you.